coming up. I wanted a full-size pool, but Bob's got this thing about trees. So what's bigger than a spa, but smaller than a pool? The answer sounds great, but putting it in the middle of a wooded landscape won't be easy. Because we're doing this, it's actually a very expensive operation. Big plans and big hopes for a small space. But will it make a big splash when it's all over? I'm Justin Cave, and this is Groundbreakers. Have you ever wanted your own private retreat out in the middle of the woods? I have, and if you have, then this project's for you. It starts right now. You guys have a great wooded property back here. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, my folks and my grandmother moved out here about 60 years ago after the war, and my folks had 25 acres on the other side of the road, and uh, my grandmother had 20 acres over here, and we fortunately ended up with 10 acres of that property, and we built a house on it 23 years ago. You guys have been here ever since. Yep, we live right in the middle of it. But it's time for some changes to make it more enjoyable. In fact, a few things have already been removed, and all that's left now are two big holes. I had to a fish pond here and a little waterfall into it and then uh, over here behind you we had a uh, we had a spa that was that we put in and then we So you tore the spa out, you tore the old fish pond out. I think we need some water here. Is, is the new plant going to have any water in it? Well, we're going to because you're standing in the spool. The spool. That's right. The fine the fine spool for me. It's a new concept. Well, it's smaller than a pool, but it's larger than a spa. Hence the spool. Hence the spool. And the man who will be responsible for making that spool a reality is landscape architect Chris Rowden. It's going to be excavated just like a regular pool would be, and they're going to use gunite and rebar and all the plumbing fixtures. fixtures. Uh, we're also going to have jets in the sides around the seating areas, just like a, a, like a fiberglass spa would have. And, and because we're doing this, it's actually a very expensive operation. Most people that ask me to do this, and, and I have lots of clients that want it, um, end up doing a regular pool because by the time you, you make it 20% larger, the costs are almost the same. So that deters people from doing a smaller pool, because why you know, get a smaller pool when you can get a bigger full-blown pool exactly. for the same price? Exactly, except then they're, they're left with a pool that they didn't want in the first place. They right. wanted something smaller and intimate. So there's, there's some compromise here. Did you want a, a, a full-size pool and you wanted well, something I, did. I wanted a full-size pool, but Bob's got this thing about trees and he wouldn't cut down as many as it would require for a pool, so it became a spool. In addition to the spool, Chris's plan adds a boulder waterfall, a paver patio for entertaining, and a fire pit where the old spa used to be. We're going to have a fire pit, not a fireplace. No, we looked. One of the first plans had a fireplace, and we just like a big masonry chimney type yeah, thing. It yeah, sort it, of obscured the view. I mean, the whole idea of this property is to be able to see the venue of the whole thing, mm -hmm. and putting a chimney up and a fireplace just seemed to seem to be the focus instead of the woods. Absolutely. So Absolutely. We, we've lowered lowered everything. That's a good idea. It's a really good idea. What's this black line here that goes all the way around the fire pit and the spool? That's going to be a reflection wall that we're including in, and it has two purposes. One, uh, to actually reflect the, the flames of the fire to kind of create some more movement and light in the space, uh, but also to kind of frame in this space. Um, kind of focusing your eye, it'd be a sight line wall so that um, if it's 48 inches tall, it's going to kind of draw your attention back into this area as opposed to wanting to look behind the garage and right. off into the woodland. A vitally important part of this project for Bob will be preserving the woods. Turns out he's been working at it his whole life. Bob has an interesting heritage of love for plants. His mother used to take him and his, t his two sisters when they were little and as they were building in this area and they would uproot natural plants and things like azaleas and and the lady slippers, she would go with her three babies in the station wagon and go dig them up. So Bob's known nothing but to love the trees and to love nature. Yeah, we transplanted a lot of plants before the developers got to it. Others didn't fare so well during some previous work. Now Bob has flagged the plants, mostly natives, that he wants saved. Chris gets the message loud and clear. Anytime you're on a job site with existing, in a natural area like this, and you have existing trees and shrubs, uh, you got to be very careful because you don't want to cover over the root zone of the tree. That'll do more damage than actually excavating around them. So in this case, what we want to try to do is really be careful for these hemlocks because they're beautiful. They're 30 foot trees. They're irreplaceable. All right, the word is out. These crews are going to have to tread lightly. We want to keep everything back, but we don't want to kill any more Absolutely. native plants. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tread so lightly that Bob has asked them if they would hand dig the spool. Hand dig the spool? Yeah. Well, yeah. that's only going to be four feet deep. That's not an unreasonable <laughs> yeah. request. Don't yeah. think that's going to happen, though. Well, yeah, maybe not. It's settled for sure the next day when a track loader arrives on site. But true to their word, the crew is taking extra care, winding their way through the woods on a route that's already been marked off with caution tape. 
It's definitely the long way around, but this path has been chosen as the one that will do the least amount of damage to the surrounding trees. Then the crew takes a long list of careful measurements to get everything laid out just right. In that spot from where you're at right now, we're still going down 10 inches, okay? So we've taken out 12 inches from where Mario's got the stick to the bottom. We need to be at about 21, 22. So we need about 10 more, okay? Today we're going to uh, try to complete grading this area to get it down to the level at which the landscape architect has specified, which will also create for us an environment where we know where the top of the pool is. That's important because tomorrow we're gonna to start excavating for the pool. We need to be able to set an elevation, a specific elevation, which to us will be the top of the patio. The pool contractor will then come in and match the top of his pool to the top of our patio. But when we come back, Bob's worried about the damage the heavy equipment is doing to his woods. He said, did the backhoe come? And I said, Bob, yes. And later, the early stages of work are making quite an impression on the rest of the family. Oh my gosh. It doesn't even look like the same place. Crews have cleared out 7,000 square feet in this wooded backyard. Now they're ready to start on the centerpiece of homeowners Bob and Denise's new landscape. It's a spool, bigger than a spa, smaller than a pool, but still in need of a serious hole in the ground. A compact excavator lumbers its way through the woods and takes the first scoops of dirt out of the ground. Denise is keeping a close eye on things during the dig, even taking some shots with the camera phone to send to Bob. Bob wanted the spool dug by hand so the crew wouldn't have to come through the woods with a piece of heavy machinery. Today, there's more than one. He did ask on the phone, I just talked to him a minute ago. He said, did the backhoe come? And I said, Bob, yes. He goes, are there three pieces out there? I said, yes, but they're smaller. So he's, he's doing all right. He did walk through the woods last night to make sure but things were still okay. After a few more hours of digging, he's home for a first-hand look. Goodness. Actually, the pool looks a little bigger than I did. I guess he laid it out bigger, and then you, by the time you put it in the side, you get small again. I don't know. I thought the same thing. But that's the design. You can see they cut it exactly. Even though he has 10 acres, Bob doesn't want this area to feel too big. In fact, the entire project will transform less than 2% of the total property, and that's just fine with the landscape architect. I actually prefer to work in a smaller space like this because everything you do is in close proximity to the people that will be enjoying it. So therefore, uh, everything you do is going to be an impact. If this were a really large yard, and it is, but if we were designing for the really large area, then you have areas that are so far away that you know the, the actual user may never experience the things that you had planned. And so when you put it all tighter together, you can do a lot more with it. And from my perspective, it's a lot more fun. And fun is what the rest of the family has already seen, too. This is our daughter, Jill. She's a sophomore at college. And she's home for the first time. Oh my gosh. It doesn't even look like the same place. Cool. Is it cool? Yeah. Is that fun? Yeah. You gonna bring your friends over? Definitely. Are we gonna get some sweet chairs to lay out in? Yeah. This looks so weird. You miss it now? I miss my playground. <laughs> okay, turn off the camera, please. Next, the crew gets busy on a short retaining wall that will level out the new patio. There's a lot of different ways to build a wall. Today, we're gonna do an architectural block wall, and it's basically just like big building blocks. We use these precast concrete blocks for the wall itself. One of the neat things about this wall is that no mortar whatsoever is required. However, we do use an aggregate base in the footer for the wall. We tamp it down real tight, 
and that's when the first row of blocks goes in. The most important thing about this wall is that first row that it's leveled this way and leveled this way. And then after that, it's just like stacking blocks. Here's what makes these blocks work. Like I said, no mortar whatsoever is required, but this lip right here is what keeps the whole wall intact. Just drop it in there, get it nice and tight. It's quick work. As one crew builds the retaining wall, one block at a time, another crew works on the plumbing for the school. It's a maze of pipes and fittings, but these guys have found a shortcut. It's an electric PVC bender using a heating element in 2300 watts to soften the plastic until it's pliable. Long pieces are bent to fit the curves of the spool, eliminating a lot of extra fittings. Looks like it's about ready. Almost done. Ding. Yep. And so it comes out looking like a piece of spaghetti right. like that. Then we hand it off. And the crew has to work quickly since the pipe starts to cool off immediately. So I got to ask you, you know, can you like stick a hoagie in this thing and heat up your lunch with it? Sure, you buy. <laughs> yeah, it's on me. Once the spool is completely plumbed, it's time to think about encasing those pipes in the spool's concrete shell. The first step is gravel. With a solid base of gravel in the spool, a steel crew uses rebar to build what pool crews call the basket. We're using a lot of rebar in this spool today, and basically rebar is the framework or the backbone of this pool. We're using a number three rebar inside the pool here and around the bench so that we can bend it. And then we use a number four rebar, which is about a half inch thick on the top of the bond beam. And it's just gonna give us a little extra reinforced strength. We took these bricks and put them up underneath the rebar. It's kind of a rebar jack. And basically, it just gives more space for concrete underneath the rebar and puts that rebar about halfway into our pour for the optimum strength. When we come back, the work is progressing, but Denise is surprised by what she sees. I really had no idea what all this was. It's hard to I, get I don't conceptualize from a flat piece of paper. And later, this time of year is usually spent raking leaves. So find out why the crew is dumping out bags of leaves all over the new landscape. For three weeks, there's been a large-scale renovation going on in a small corner of this wooded backyard. Crews have built a spool, half spa, half pool, and are now creating an entertainment patio around it. A stacked stone seating wall also incorporates a fire pit, which is being hooked up today. Bob and Denise are getting a close-up look at how work is progressing. I really had no idea what all this was. It's hard I, to get, I don't it's, conceptualize from a flat piece of paper. So. And it's hard to, it's hard to, especially but once you, the work starts going in, it starts coming around, you start to get that visual. Yeah, I just didn't have any idea. I didn't even know what a fire pit was, but I like it. With the stonework completed, workers lay the paper patio. This paper patio is almost complete. We're doing the finishing step right here, which is sealing it. I've seen people use a lot of different things to seal a patio, all the way from granite dust to play sand. And once you sweep that in, it's gonna get washed out after the first rain, and you're gonna have to come right back out and do it again. We're using a polymeric sand, and what this sand does is after it's swept in the crack, you put one application of water on it, and it expands and seals the crack. Next up, the waterfall. For such an important focal feature, landscape architect Chris Rowden is on hand to make sure it turns out exactly the way he drew it up. We want to be able to see the water source. We want to see some drops in the water if possible uh, when you're looking at it from the screen porch in the house. And then you want to see the final drop as it falls into the spool. The next morning, another crew is on site too, because today the spool is getting its texture finish. It comes out wet, blue, and bumpy, but is quickly troweled smooth as it begins to dry. The final step is a wash that flushes away much of the bright blue coloring, exposing a multicolored pebble aggregate underneath. A few days later, Denise catches some adjustments being made to the waterfall. Okay, we have a little issue here. They've put in the, uh, the slab for the waterfall to come over, but it, it looks like a piece of cement. We wanted it to look a little more like the, the natural stones. 
They're going to chip away on the edge of this and try to rough up the front of it.